who are working and how that be really affected. So that's uh, the spirit of revelation. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Brian? Certainly, you aren't perfect at mentoring yet, but there's a definite absence of the once was agony of trying to get people to do home teaching. And the absence of that has really added value without really doing it. Great, thank you. The absent agony, agony because of the checklist approach, the do this this month, do that month. Okay, great, thank you. Anyone else? Brother? I think by uh, making this change, it's kind of removed the wrapper of, of, uh, of what happened home teaching, and it got to the core of the purpose of home teaching, which was really obscured mm -hmm. by all that. That the, the procedure and, and uh, dread and, and whatnot, and it's I think as an eligible person, I think it's easier now to, to teach what it is, what is the purpose of ministry. If you can love them, and without all that fog all around it, you can get down to the core of it, and, and, that, and it's easier to teach. I think. Right. For me, it is. Yeah. Well, it's less of a pro. It's not a program. Right. It is the core of gospel. Uh, the yeah, thank you very much. I saw another hand, brother. Yeah. Right here. If you'll stand, please go see that. Um, the changes that when they when they were introduced, we saw wonderful miracles taking place in the way of ministry and people helping each other, kind of thinking outside the box for a change. But also, um, I'm surprised at how many members were confused as to what to do. Yeah, because now, yeah, so we've had to work with that, and so there's some dynamics there. That we've had. Okay, great. Sure, there's work to do um, because when you no longer have the strict requirements, then people say, "Well, then what is it I do do?" Yeah, great. Thank you. I'm sure it's uh, for a lot of us still um, evolving. Brother, what do we have, sister? We come from a very uh, large geographic area in northern Kansas and southern Nebraska. Oh. And uh, what I've seen as the branch president is a focus on the person or a focus on the family and not worried so much about the numbers. So I think the focus is where it needs to be. Uh, we're concerned about uh, the person or their family. And uh, that's been just a, a wonderful, uh, remarkable change in our branch where it's just a very large uh, geographic area. Thank you very much. Sister? Um, in our branch here in downtown Omaha, I think one of the big things we've seen is that this is a lesson to something bigger, to help us to learn how to pay attention to the Holy Ghost more. Because we're seeing a lot more prayer, because people don't have a checklist. And so what we just continue to ask the sisters is, please pray for the sisters to whom you minister. And when you have an idea, follow it. And that's learning the language of the Spirit for themselves. And that's a huge lesson that all of us need, not just in ministry, but in our lives, especially as President Nelson has directed us as to continue to increasingly um, just have more of the adversary trying to, to bring us down. Oh, great, thank you. Um, think about this for a minute. What effect is having young women in your ward or your branch ministering had? What is that? And then I saw a hand against the wall. Sister, go ahead. You make your comment while others are thinking about the young women. Uh, well, it wasn't in relation to that question. <laughs> I'm That's still fine. working on that one, so I want to hear ideas. But um, with young women, um, what's amazing about ministry is that it doesn't have to be a box, and that we can do um, texting and FaceTime and Marco Polo and all these different ways to communicate that the Lord has given us. And I think utilizing young women in that is awesome because they understand technology. And um, I've seen the ward open up. Um, that it's not a once a month visit, you have to come with me and your kids have to be quiet and we have to talk about this one talk. That um, like the sister said, it can be spirit led, it can be needs led and, and wants led. Right, thank you. Anybody else? The effect that involving young women in ministry, please. Okay. 
my daughter received an assignment to minister to someone who had asked not to have contact with the church, and no one really knew her, and so she and her companion went to the door to meet this sister. Now, the sister didn't answer the door. My daughter, I think, took some relief in this. But the growth that it took for her to get out of her comfort zone and to do something uncomfortable for the Lord has had an effect on who she is and how she perceives herself and how she perceives the Lord. Great, thank you so much. We talk to these young people about we can do hard things, but then they never have to. So when they do, uh, they realize they really can. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else about young women involved in young women? Way in the back, please. Right here. If you'll stand up, please. Um, my story is similar to President Derek's, um, except for the young woman was able to get in the door of a, a family that was not accepting sister ministers. And the, as far as I know, I think that this young woman is still the only contact that this woman that she ministers to, that she has with the church, and they have a beautiful relationship, and she, they love each other, and um, maybe you have more counsel, but we're talking about this young woman and how she's doing with this one lady in our ward that no one else can reach. That's wonderful. They do have an, uh, an ability to reach people that others cannot, so I think that's terrific. What, what, um, let's talk for just a minute about how ministry interviews are helping members, both those who are ministering and those who are being interviewed. How are the ministry interviews helping members? Sister. I find that the ministering interviews are an opportunity to talk to the sisters about how things are going in their lives and help to kind of break the ice a little bit sometimes and, and minister to them, to them how they're doing, and then an opportunity to instruct them that while sometimes they, they tend to think that they're not doing a good job, to help them see what things they are doing and to make ministering a reachable um, and actionable items that they that they need to do to us it's, it's already incorporated in their lives but it's something that they they they, they can do and, and and it's still it's it's an alleviation it's something that they're looking once they've engaged in it that we're hopefully that they look forward to great thank you as the sister was talking about those interviews help both just help the sister who's being interviewed or the brother but also can help instruct them in how to be better ministers Anybody else have extra twin interviews, please? So, as I've been doing uh, ministering interviews as an overcome president, what's impressed me the most is as I talk with um, the people in my quorum, the stories that seem to be most successful are, are often the people who they're not assigned to minister to just felt impressed that they you know, had the opportunity to kind of fall in their laps and be able to say, I don't you know. And, and it, even, even to the point where one had said, I don't know if that counts or not. And I said, of course it does. <laughs> I've noticed a mentality change in, in, it's not a program, and so we don't need to stick with the, just the assignment of those what are going to be. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're not counting. Does it count? Does it meet the criteria? Great. We're only counting if the interviews happen. That's where we can. Okay, great. Sister in the back. Oh, was there a brother over here too? I'm sorry. Why don't you stand and go ahead and then we'll come to you. Yes, hold your place. Thank you, sister. I like how Elder Renlund said the committee is guilt and shame. And I think that is um, as our attitude turns on ministering. Um, we're getting rid of the guilt and shame that was with the program and really helping them focus on hearts and the spirit. Thank you. Uh, Neil, I'm the president of the Ditto Church, and I think that uh, we have a huge area that we have to uh, work. Sometimes I think it's bigger than the state of the uh, And uh, it's been difficult to 
get the brother to drop the idea that it's a one of the And to just be a loving, caring guy. And that's just a member. We're so spread out that we have lots of members. They're very one member. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to see them have to travel 30 miles to minister to another member. So I want them to minister to the people in your, in your neighborhood. And I get the feeling from all that's coming down in the last 18 months that uh, the Lord is trying to get us on a simple night table. And we need to speed up our, up the work. That's the feeling I get. And I can see that being a reason to be as open and loving and helpful to our neighbors as possible. Because there aren't enough factors that's going on. We need to have more. Thank you. Certainly, yeah. Extends the reach of. Okay, well, we've got time for one more hand back here, and then Sister Cook has got some questions on a different topic for you. Right back here, please. I like that it's changed the attitude from reporting numbers to reporting hearts. And it's helped me. I really think I pray. I pray that it helps me to see I'm enjoying all of your inspired responses. Our next question is, what have you experienced as you try to use the correct name of the church? We've heard what the Ramones are experiencing. Well, the Ramones going into debt. <laughs> that was so spending. <laughs> what have you experienced? Yes, brother. of the name of the church is so long and it's hard to spit it all out but just by speaking the word Jesus Christ it creates a whole change it creates a whole new feeling in the conversation when people ask me what church I belong to I say belong to the church of Jesus Christ they pause and they think that man this guy's a Christian he believes in Jesus Christ and just by saying the word I feel a conversation to myself I don't feel embarrassed by it and that's me saying it came nearer to me and it helped me Thank you. Amen. Anyone else? The sister's going to respond and we'll take care and then over to her. Our young woman, we, um, we often take a few minutes to have a little missionary moment. And our girls almost weekly have some time where somebody will mention Mormons or something else and they'll correct the name and they have had so many missionary opportunities to share the gospel and my daughter just recently before school got out they were talking about the Mormons in her choir class and she got up and bore testimony of Jesus Christ through a whole choir class so that was awesome mine has been a little bit similar uh, I'm, I'm glad that I'm not getting charged with all um, so right after the change for the uh, announcement sent out the announcement. I talked with my co-workers about it. We, they followed my sons on their mission a little bit, even though they're not members. And I said, oh, I've got to start doing this, because now they correct me. <laughs> <laughs> they owe you them. Uh, this was the Monday um, after general conference and the announcement. And the, uh, but I was determined that the next time I had the opportunity that I was going to say the full name of the church, and it was, um, there's a group of us girls that like to go to the gym together and we have a trainer and she said, and she knows that we're all um, go to the same church and she said, what's the name of your church again? And I just felt like, I just felt like I stepped up and I said, it's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it was just, um, it was interesting for myself, that experience. 
experience because I remember um, Elder Packer that they talked about when they tried to into the church and uh, I felt like, ah, you know, it just didn't really feel real to me. But this time it felt real and as soon as I said uh, the whole name of our church, there was this power that I felt when I said it and I felt ownership and I felt, um, I just felt like, yes, this this is it, and I, I'm here in all for it. I'm in. This is me. This is who I am. I think the Spirit probably witnesses to the people, you know, the Holy Ghost witnesses to the people that we give that name to, just through our eyes and our face. We're probably like primary children. I feel like I am, now's my chance. Oh, I is the church. You know, they're probably going, okay. Oh. But there really is a spirit to it. I, I appreciate all those responses. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Okay. I was just going to say that it's helped eliminate a lot of prejudices that people have. Um, if I say I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, instead of adding also known as Mormons or something like that, like I used to do, it's eliminated a lot of prejudice and they just, okay, go right along and they don't go, oh, or I don't know, any other kind of ideas they might have previously had. Thank you, thank you. Our next question that we're going to go to is, what difference has the home center church supported emphasis made? Maybe for you or in your unit, in your family, you personally, or to narrow it down, maybe the come follow me experience we're all having. How has that affected you and your family? Thank you. Go here and then we'll come to this gentleman. This has changed my family's life. I serve as Relief Society president and I am like the last person that would ever have that calling, but I do. And um, I have two teenagers and we started doing the little paragraph each night and reading it. And um, at seven o'clock, my kids just know that's what we do. And I think in order for us to spread it to the sheep we minister to, we have to have a testimony. And the Lord, in the sweetest way, has given me and my family the biggest testimony that this is just a time for my kids to open up to me. We don't really ever stay on topic. In fact, it's very rare we do, but when we start talking about some peer pressure they might be having or something funny that happened at school or something a teacher said that was kind of weird or whatever. <coughs> it is priceless, it is precious, it is inspired. And I love it and I can't imagine going forward without it. Thank you. Someone was here. And then we'll go here and here. Um. As a bishop, I had a, a text message a couple months ago from my pr primary president, and uh, it was unsolicited, and she just sent me a note saying that she was equally impressed with the, the effect that this program, I, if I had to say, I mean, this is my, all of this is my favorite thing to change. And um, she said that she's amazed at how much better prepared the primary children really are when they come to class. And it's just transformed my marriage. It, it just has. And uh, I thank the Lord for those things. Thank you. I think overall, I've noticed just a, a deeper level of conversation, whether that be in my home or in uh, Sunday school or in Relief Society. Um, it leads and it has led to and better conversation. I love the fact that more people are coming to Sunday school from the reports I hear that are exciting. <clears throat> My wife mentioned that we're empty nesters and this has given us a chance to have a week-long family home meetings and use technology and to make comments and we're all on the same page in the same lesson and so we're able to continue that throughout the week with our children and our mom mom still alive, but <laughs> 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 there are different places in this country. Thank you. Uh, 
So I, I'm the vision of my board also as a better as a child. And uh, recently, one of my siblings, my youngest sibling, actually left the church. And, uh, and many years ago, and she was always LGBTQ coordinator of the kids in Columbia, Ohio. And my daughter and I were going to play a like, game board game, and my daughter was going to select the gender of her character, and I was trying to picture this. And I said, gender is a body, it's a bunch of construct, and we thought that would be the topic of the time. Um, and the next morning, a phone call from the admiral, which Christ is Jesus Christ marriage, and Christ stayed, male and male and female in the Lord. And it was just, it was just like, this is why I'm this mess. It has really helped us in my life. I'm so glad we started the camp. That was inspired because I talked to those working on programs and did all this. Like really talking about the music stuff. This is what we did. I don't think I've ever had such an opportunity to teach my kids that one on one. Because you know, we're not perfect at it. You know, we have a lot of work. And we're just like great math teachers and we've always done that. But through that, that I, I the joke of about it because that, that was you know, like, how do I teach this to my daughter? Because we have a lesbian and Hispanic in this country, we're going to try and walk that issue. Mm -hmm. And the compulsory manual just nails it for us the exact right time. Thank you so much. Move on to the next question. Uh, what effort or what effect does age group pro progression for children and youth have? What effect does the age group progression for children and youth have? Any other experiences or thoughts about that? Yes. Um, and if you have another comment, maybe stand up so our microphones can be going to you quickly. Thank you. I, I think for us, one of the things that has just been great to see the enthusiasm of the new deacons and the new beehives and their effect on the older boys and girls. I mean, we had a, a, a new deacon that the priests were acting up a little bit in class and we called them out on it. He was so excited to be there. He was so beautiful to see. So, so excited to have a primary. <laughs> I love the primary. Um, it kind of relates to youth being able to go to the temple as well. It's a, it's a pretty powerful thing. You know, my father passed away probably, it's been about six years ago, and I finally am able to go do that thing in the temple and a young man stood proxy for it and it was just such a connection that we had when we could look at each other and I don't know if he knew the magnitude of what it meant to me but I was able to talk with him afterwards and it feels like we just had such a connection at a young age for the thing he was doing to serve my father and Jesus. Thank you. We'll go to these last two that are standing. Uh, I have five kids at home. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I went less active during the worst possible years that a kid could go less active. And I lost my testimony for a long time. And when this change happened, it was right at the moment where I was very worried that the world was going to suck my kids in and I was going to lose them. And this change has just made my children titans among their friends. It has made them strong in the community. It has made them more concerned and more aware of what's happening. They're so much better than I'll ever be. And it's because of this program. So I'm just like this other brother. This is why I am super excited about the changes that are happening. Uh, I would say that uh, really it's, it's been uh, stepping up of our youth, uh, both with the the, the couple of new program and the the change in in the group progression they've all just stepped up in role and responsibility and, and attitude thank you that? Yeah. sorry i don't mean to speak twice no, that's fine. Thank you. this one's kind of a miracle in our ward um i i honestly think it was, it was such a slight change but yet it wasn't because we had we had a small group of young men and then we had six all come in at the same time. And they would have been scattered throughout the year and they were struggling at primary. And I mean, they were, you know, up to everybody's 10 and 11 year old boys, I'm sure, usually the, the one that the primary president's targeting, trying to get dads to sit on them and stuff like that. And uh, we had, we had, they're good boys, but when, when they came in, we had a chance to really work with them as a group. Um, 
really very very strongly. And I, I've never seen a transformation of, of a, a group of young men accepting the, the Aaronic priesthood, all passing the sacrament, and it was it was simply astounding. I mean, just the miraculous change in their lives. I'm so thankful to hear these positive things. Thank you. Our, we have two family members who are young men's presidents. And they said it has been so overwhelming to have this group of 11 year old young women come all at once. They're kind of taking over young women. I don't know if anyone, <laughs> anyone else has that experience, but for all those young women leaders who are struggling with that, it's nice to hear, isn't it? The blessing from the perspective that can come from this. Did you have something to share? We have a uh, young man in our board who was really struggling in primary. He was acting up. Um, he was causing a lot of issues. He was saying a lot of things to get a lot of attention. And uh, when this, this came along, I got an opportunity to sit down with him and interview him. Seven months before, he had turned 12 years old. And uh, coming in to have that responsibility changed and it was a month later that I felt inspired to call him as our Deacon's Club President. And he is a wonderful Deacon's Club President. And it has just made a change in him, and it also is changing his family as well. Thank you. So Thank you, great. brothers and sisters. Just one other comment. I hope that those of you who are serving as Elders Club President, Relief Society Presidents, thought about the impact of this bishop being able to interview that young man. You know, with all of us joining together to free up our bishop, they're having more opportunities to focus on our youth, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you for those inspired responses. Brothers and sisters, would you please stand? It doesn't do us any good to hasten the work of salvation with blood clots. <laughs> um, one of the things Elder Jones taught the missionaries today as we met with them, was something that uh, keeps resonating with me. And that is, um, uh, and that this is a reference, you can think of Moroni chapter 6, verse 4, and you're familiar with that, but it says that after people joined the church and so on, their names were taken, that they might be remembered and nourished by the good word of God, to keep them in the right way, to keep them continually watchful and in prayer, relying alone upon the merits of Christ, who is the author and finisher of their faith. And the church did meet together oft to fast and to pray and to speak one another concerning the welfare of their souls. And so that verse, if we were to summarize it, is number them, name them, know them, and go after them. Um, Elder Jones, why don't you share what you did about the number... <laughs> I have observed in my own family and with others a process that allows us to bring people into the church. And we almost always start with goals. We talk about goals and numerically often how many baptisms or how many people do we want to help uh, receive the Melchizedek okay, priesthood. But it always starts with a number. The numbers have to become people. They have to become a name. There's a process from number to name. Once we have a name, we have to we have to identify. We have to see their face. We have to know their face. People have to know their face. From number to name, from name to face. And now that I know their face, I need to get to know them. I need to become their friend. They need to have many friends in the church. From number to name name to face, face to friend. And people are going to remain in the church, and people are going to remain with us because we love them and they love us. It's because they become our family. I am a Jones, but I was adopted into the Lockwood family, the Taylor family, the Albright family, all of my family. I could go on and on, but the Joneses became part of so many families as they ministered to my parents and bringing them back into the church. Number to name, name to face, face to friend, and to family, family to God. It was those people that I can still see in my mind in the Salt Lake Temple in the ceiling room when they were all around when we were sealed as a family. If we're to bring anybody into the church, I 
think our hearts have to be open to bring them all the way through. We're going to shift gears now, and Ruth's going to erase what we have up there. And I'd like to invite you to um, pose any questions or, or concerns. You know, we've heard wonderful testimonials about the effect of these changes. But do you have concerns that are keeping up with them? Do you have questions that you'd like answered? And there's no such thing as a bad question. And we'll, we'll get the question, we'll get a shot a little bit on the board, and that's more to trigger us. And then we will take each question and we'll just pick randomly around them and try to answer them. Every question that you could ask, everyone has at least 10 different aspects or things to consider. We're going to try under the inspiration of heaven to answer one or two of those aspects, recognizing we're leaving eight or nine behind. And if we miss and hit the wrong aspect, my sincere prayer is that the Holy Ghost will provide the answer to you so that as we talk about it. So then when we finish talking about it, we're going to another question. And so we'll get the questions out. There are no bad questions. Some questions can be better than others. Listen to this difference. If you were to ask, when will the second coming occur? <laughs> That'll get a certain response. But if you ask, how can we prepare for the second coming? That's a more fruitful question, if that, just as a true instance. Another pairing, why can't 18-year-old young women be called on missions? That's a type of question, and perfectly valid. But it's a better question to ask, how do we help have more missionaries to go from our wards and branches? There's a difference. By the way, this is something we can see that there's been a proposal to decrease the missionary age for young men to 16. Because at age 16, they actually know everything. <laughs> and their mothers won't weep when they leave.